so let's talk about our thinking and about materiality and yeah. and and loss of what okay. or yeah. fear of let's loss. Of let's do that. Yeah, that. It's a subject that uh, I'm uh, managing through uh, having left MIT, where I guess that's Bruce Willis when he had the whatever. Yeah. And right. I'm at RISD now. I have the. Uh, yeah. You know, and. Um, it's a different world. It's a world of pencil. Um, it's a world of, uh, you know how you have the guy at the airport with the watches? You know, like, Rizzy, like, there's like pencils and pens, like, ah, my tools, you know? There's such pride in the tools of uh, making with your hands. And it's something that um, I knew personally when I went from MIT to art school, and I remembered, I'll never forget, how uh, when I was doing drawings and, um, uh, this was like in the early 90s, uh, but I was already used to using like Photoshop and things like that. You know? And so like I was drawing and the pen and whatever, and I made a mistake. And my hand reached for the undo, uh -huh. the, the phantom reflex. Yeah. And uh, so I've always been kind of dealing with that question at that moment where I began to wonder, so at what point do you lose that materiality? Um, I also saw it worldwide when I would um, uh, teach at different art and design schools to do like a workshop, and I would begin the workshop with a simple exercise where uh, I pass out an uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper or an A4 sheet of paper, and I say, uh, I'd like you to cut that paper into four pieces. And mom, man, they go like, how? Like, you have a knife or something or a straight edge? I said, no, use your hands. How? And so you fold it in half, you know, you do this thing, whatever, and uh, I discovered that many art and design schools didn't have that hand sensibility. Um, so by being at RISD, I'm around people who are very hand-centric. They do what I call critical think, critical make. They live in this sort of a half-head, half-mind space. Of, uh, something different. Do you think we're losing some of that with this discussion or this movement toward design thinking? I think we're kind of getting it back because we aren't on YouTube, actually. So we're physical here. I mean, they can throw stuff at us. Yeah, yeah. So that's real. So we're yeah. bringing it back here. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, I can in do this to you. <laughs> it's a Twitter post. Sweet. Oh. <laughs> that's really I like that. You want know, to RT it, retweet, retweet yeah. over there? There we go. Retweet. What's chocolate? Oh, that's good. I, we can't eat over the internet either. Yeah, that's good stuff. And also, you know, did you design in the sound? It's really very good. Mm. So well, you've, you've seen this yourself, haven't you? I mean, I think that uh, uh, being at Business Week, the, uh, the magazine that uh, 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 you basically uh, ran and uh, managed for many years, and um, now you're, you're, you're different. You're... You're vulnerable now, just like me. Yeah. You're like vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it neat? <laughs> <laughs> For no some problem. reason, I find myself crossing my legs tighter and tighter as the day has gone on. <laughs> it is neat. It is neat. It's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting sensibility to be mm. vulnerable. Mm. Um, and it's also fascinating to be surrounded by students uh, who uh, are constantly creating. Mm, yeah. You know, I go down uh, stairs into the lobby of Parsons Building. Totally. The lobbies. Mm -hmm. Every week there's a new thing, in, you know, whether it's photography or depending on which school. Mm -hmm. And it's just this incredible rolling out of creativity and creativity. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it has to do with, or almost all of it, mm -hmm. it's the hands, you mm -hmm. know. Because um, you're, 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 you're there. You're in the medium of the art and design dungeon. Yes, that's right. And uh, I'm not removed from it the way you I You seem so is. much more relaxed, too. Oh, thank you. That's very good. Yeah. Thank you. I really do. I, I think it's because we're, you're, you're feeling or we can feel. I'm mean, really this thing about this, uh, this thing. It's like, you know, it's like amazing. I mean, to model this would take forever. You know, at RISD, it's funny because uh, we have this um, thing called G Speak. It's a technology by John Undercoffler. You can stick your gloves in. It's like in Tom Cruise's movie where you can like grab oh. information or whatever, you know. And so um, it's at RISD. And um, it's been there. And uh, there was a term-long experimentation of uh, undergraduates in textiles and graphic design and apparel and furniture design. And so they spent a, a, a term with this alien technology. And so I went to the final review, and it was just so interesting, you know. 
because uh, in G speak, you can like wear gloves and you can like, you know, do this thing that's beautiful. It's like very sexy and everything. And so like, um, the problem that when G speak is when you draw a line with your hand, the line's kind of crooked, you know? Yeah. So uh, a RISD jewelry designer designed a beautiful metal brace to attach to your arm to draw a straight line. <laughs> you see at MIT, you would have like, written like a month long software project to really to take all the noise out, you know? You know? So that was, I was like, oh, wait a second, that seems to make a lot of sense. That's an intuitive approach. Yeah. Or like um, a one apparel student designed these two sleeves to attach yourself to another person, mm. to simulate two people drawing with an elastic connection. Again, three months long at MIT. <laughs> to write the software code to simulate an elastic uh, sim uh, interaction like that. I began to wonder, you know, like I'm wondering. And you're in the process of wondering. What do you think some of the implications as you're beginning this journey are for, I don't know, changing not yeah. just design education, but yeah. we're talking a lot about business models, we're talking yeah. a lot about innovation, we're talking a lot about, and there's a lot of assumed knowledge about that. What is return to or focus on what you're talking about mean for that? Uh, it means that um, we've been living in this constant incrementalism. Get it faster, get it better. Incrementalism and always sort of resetting. You know, remember like when there were like, um, uh, like personal computer, no network, floppy disk, could do nothing, and then that the gorgeous CD-ROM thing came out. 300 megabytes, oh my gosh, and dual site, 600 megabytes. You can show images on your computer, you can look at it, you can look at the audio and movies, and then the internet happened. And suddenly you were text back again, text, you know, text, and then a few images, and then sound, and then video appeared, and then mobile phones. And a little, you know, text, and then you get a little sound, and you get movies again, whatever. I don't know, it feels like Groundhog Day a bit. What's the message there? The message is that we have to step way back and understand again. You know, we know the answer is not to uh, buy Adobe seats for every living person in the world, because, the, I mean, what can you do with it? I mean, it's, it can do so much, but now, you know, version 10 or 3 or 11, one incremental step means nothing in expression. So that game is lost already. So somewhere between the hand and the computer, uh, a lot of knowledge was lost. And the danger is this hand-based knowledge is going away. Um, a lot of people who have mastery in this um, are a decreasing population. People that can use metal, uh, make textiles, create colors you can't make. I see stuff by our faculty that uh, there's this guy named Jerry Eminen. I think he's late 70s person. I went to his like, exhibition. It's these paintings using uh, Japanese uh, pigments. And uh, I look at the images, and I'm not sure how he could make them. Hmm. So that knowledge is actually um, getting lost as we speak, I believe. Hmm. Well, let me show you something. Don't get too excited. <laughs> I know there's been a lot of discussion oh, about things, yeah. but there's, no. No, it has, it's not medical. No, no, no. It's a, it's a buckle that's a uh, oh. silver buckle by a uh, Navajo artist that I collect. Hmm. And it's um, been around a long time. And it's beautiful stamp work. And the stamps that he uses are, I think, his father's and his grandfather's and some of his own. And most of them are made by old, uh, from old railroad ties. Mm. that run through various parts of the Navajo Reservation. And over the years, he's collected them and made his own stamps. Mm. And he pounds them out. Mm -hmm. And they're just beautiful. Um, and in that community of wonderful Native American artists, the physical is still not only relevant, but mm. celebrated. Mm. Um, and it lives on. Uh, very strongly there. Uh, I think uh, what you're saying, and what, kind of what I'm observing, is mm -hmm. that it is beginning to fade, or is yep. threatening to fade, 
in some of the educational institutions yeah. that we have. I mean, a lot of things you see that I've seen at RISD, you can't make with a 3D printer. Um, so I keep wondering, like, you know, are we going forward? Are we, are we like in that thing with a CD-ROM and then we go back and go back? And, I mean, have we been so jaded that I thought you were going to take your belt buckle off and show us a Bluetooth headset or something? I mean, like, I keep wondering, like, yeah. what age are we living in when these things can be, this could be anything nowadays? You know, so. Like a jawbone. Anyway, I thought it was a jawbone. I think, wow, wow, Bruce had the jawbone belt buckle. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad idea. Okay. <laughs> should I keep my belt buckled or shall I call a, call a friend? <laughs> Get it like, I don't know. Make up your mind. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. It is. It's really good. Thank you. Thank you.